Now endothelial activation occurs secondary to pneumocyte injury and this pneumocyte injury is sensed by the resident alveolar macrophage which is going to secrete mediators such as tumor necrosis factor and interleukin number 1. Alternatively, the endothelium might also be activated. Microscopically, there is interstitial and intraalveolar edema, inflammation, fibrin deposition, ultimately leading to diffuse alveolar damage. The alveolar walls becomes lined by waxy hyaline membranes, which is composed of fibrin-rich edema fluid mixed with the remnants of necrotic epithelial cells. Pulmonary edema basically means excessive interstitial fluid accumulation inside the alveoli. It can result from two main causes. One is hemodynamic disturbances leading to cardiogenic edema and another one is increased capillary permeability due to microvascular injury leading to non-cardiogenic edema. So what are the causes of hemodynamic edema? So it includes increased hydrostatic pressure and decreased oncotic pressure. Now increased hydrostatic pressure is the more common cause and it occurs due to left ventricular failure most commonly and other conditions associated with volume overload. Decreased oncotic pressure occurs because of hypoalbuminemia secondary to liver disease, nephrotic syndrome and protein losing enteropathy. What are the causes of edema due to microvascular injury or epithelial injury? So they are either direct injury or indirect injury. Direct injury includes infections like bacterial pneumonia, inhaled gases like high concentration of oxygen and smoke, aspiration of gastric contents, drowning or even ionizing radiation. The indirect cause of injury includes systemic inflammatory response syndrome conditions like burns, sepsis, excessive trauma or blood transfusion related complications like trally. Coming back to our main topic of discussion, is acute lung injury or ARDS. Acute lung injury is characterized by the abrupt onset of hypoxemia and bilateral pulmonary edema in the absence of cardiac failure, that is it is a non-cardiogenic type of pulmonary edema. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, also called as ARDS, is a manifestation of severe acute lung injury. ARDS is a clinical syndrome of progressive respiratory insufficiency due to diffuse alveolar damage in the setting of sepsis, severe trauma or diffuse pulmonary infection. Both ARDS and ALI are associated with increased pulmonary vascular permeability, edema and epithelial cell death. Now the major histological manifestation of ARDS or ALI is diffuse alveolar damage. The causes of ARDS are very much similar to the causes of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema and includes infections like sepsis, diffuse pulmonary infections, gastric aspiration, physical trauma like pulmonary contusions, drowning, burns, fat embolism, head injuries, radiation, inhalation of excessive amount of oxygen or irritants like smoke, hematological condition like trally and DIC, and other systemic conditions include shock, pancreatitis, uremia, hypersensitivity reaction, chemical injury and drugs. Now we come into the pathogenesis of acute lung injury or ARDS. Now ALI or ARDS is initiated by injury of pneumocytes and pulmonary endothelium setting in motion a vicious cycle of inflammation and pulmonary damage. The pathogenesis can be discussed under four important headings. One, endothelial activation, 2. Adhesion and extravasation of neutrophils, 3. Accumulation of intraalveolar fluid and formation of hyaline membranes, 4. Resolution of injury. Coming back to the first pathogenetic event that is endothelial activation. Now endothelial activation occurs secondary to pneumocyte injury and this pneumocyte injury is sensed by the resident alveolar macrophage which is going to secrete mediators such as tumor necrosis factor and interleukin number 1. Alternatively, the endothelium might also be activated by the circulating inflammatory mediators which is basically released in the setting of sepsis or severe tissue injury. These mediators, they basically injure the endothelial cells and activate them. They also increase the expression of adhesion molecules in the endothelium. Coming to the second pathological event, 
adhesion and extra vasation of neutrophils neutrophils adhere to the activated endothelium and migrate into the interstitium and the alveoli where they degranulate and release the inflammatory mediators including proteases reactive oxygen species and cytokines thus setting in motion a vicious cycle of inflammation and endothelial damage coming to the next pathological point accumulation of intraalveolar fluid and formation of hyaline membrane endothelial activation and injury increases the vascular permeability allowing the interstitial and intraalveolar fluid to accumulate damage and necrosis of both type 1 and type 2 alveolar pneumocyte occurs damage to type 2 pneumocyte leads to surfactant abnormalities ultimately the protein rich edema fluid along with the debris from the dead alveolar epithelial cells organized to form what is called as hyaline membrane which is a characteristic feature of ali or ards at the end there is a resolution of injury resolution of injury is slow and difficult in ali ards due to epithelial necrosis and ongoing inflammation that impairs the ability of the remaining cells to assist with edema resorption eventually when the inflammatory stimulus decreases macrophage removes the intraalveolar debris also releases fibrogenic cytokines like tgf beta and pdgf these factors stimulate fibroblast growth and collagen deposition ultimately leading to fibrosis of the alveolar walls the residual type 2 pneumocytes proliferate to replace the type 1 pneumocytes reconstituting the alveolar lining endothelial restoration occurs through proliferation of the uninjured capillary endothelium coming to the morphology in the acute exudative stage the lungs are heavy firm red and boggy microscopically there is interstitial and intraalveolar edema inflammation fibrin deposition ultimately leading to diffuse alveolar damage the alveolar walls becomes lined by waxy hyaline membranes which is composed of fibrin rich edema fluid mixed with the remnants of necrotic epithelial cells in the proliferative or organizing stage type 2 pneumocytes proliferates as well as there is a formation of granulation tissue in the alveolar walls in most cases this granulation tissue will resolve leaving behind minimal functional impairment but in some cases the fibrosis might continue and might lead to fibrosis of the alveolar septum clinically the patients of ARDS ALI presents with profound dyspnea and tachypnea followed by increasing respiratory failure hypoxemia cyanosis and ultimately there is an appearance of diffuse bilateral infiltrates on radiographic examination 